Okay guys, let's have a look at implicit differentiation. A marvellous little technique which I know you're just going to absolutely love. Okay, So let's start by considering the circle. x squared plus y squared equals 16. And we're asked to find the gradient of this curve when x equals 2. Well, there are two ways to do this. You've got, here's a visual for you, when x is 2, there's one spot, there's one value, value of y, and there's another value of y. So you can see this thing's not a function, it's a relation, because there are two values of y for each value of x, with the exception, of course, of these extremities, minus 4 and plus 4, but it still means it's a relation. So, how would you find the gradient? Well, you've probably grown for a start, and the traditional method would say you'd make y the subject of this equation, which we can quite easily do, and you would take the derivative dy dx, then you would sub x equals 2 into that to find the gradient. And the second method which I'm going to show you today is implicit differentiation, which I can tell you is a lot less trouble. A lot less trouble. This is differentiating term by term as you go, without rearranging and making y the subject. It's so cool. I'll show you. So, let's do the traditional method first, just to prove that we can do it with this curve. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals 16. Yes, okay, so let's make y squared the subject and then take the square root of both sides. Um, and we get that, yes? So what we've got to do now is do dy dx, the gradient of this beast here, right? So that's uh, what's y is something to the half, so it's going to be half of the something to the minus a half times the, der the derivative of the something, which would be minus 2x wouldn't it? It would indeed. There it is, but I've left the plus or minus out the front. Um, so what does that get us? It looks like these twos will cancel, doesn't it? Yes, and we get a this. That looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, because I had a minus here, but look, that just changes from plus or minus to minus or plus, which, you know, it's all the same. It all comes out in the wash, doesn't it, as my mum says? So there you go. So that's dy dx. Now, what we're going to do now is sub x equals 2 into that, and we get that, uh, don't we? It looks like it, yes, which is 2 over root 12, plus or minus, and that's going to be 2 over 2 root 3, cancel the 2's, and you get plus or minus 1 over root 3, okay? Don't have to rationalise the denominator, by the way. Now, that wasn't too much trouble, because we were actually able to make y the subject. It was a bit of trouble, a bit annoying, but we were still able to do it with the traditional technique. However, you can't with some of these equations, as we'll show you in a moment. Now I'm going to do the implicit differentiation method for you, term by term, and lots of fun. Watch this. x squared plus y squared equals 16. Therefore, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Okay? That's the deal. So the derivative of this left-hand side with respect to x equals the derivative of this right-hand side, which is going to be 0 because there's no x term in there. It's just a constant. Uh, however, we'll, just sh uh, we'll watch that play out as we go. So therefore, we make this left-hand side a little bit easier to sort of grapple with. Uh, d by dx of x squared plus d by dx of y squared. But you see, this is y, not x. So this is a little bit tricky. I'll show you the rabbit-out-of-a-hat technique for this in a moment, okay? So now we know that d, d by dx of x squared is just 2x with respect to x, isn't it? It is. But what about d by dx of y squared? Yes, that's right. Oh, dear. However, it's actually very, very simple. Enter the chain rule, and I'll show you how beautiful it is. So we say that d by dx of y squared, we could say, well, we know what d by dy of y squared is, it's it's just going to be 2y, isn't it? That's with respect to y. And we just chain rule it. Look at that. Look at that. See, it's d by dy of y squared times dy dx. And that y, the written in blue there, the dy, that's the link in the chain. Okay? Yes, I know. It's pretty nice, isn't it? So there you, that's what you get. That's, that's what d by dx of y squared is. It's d by dy of y squared times dy dx. Yes? Yes, I know. It's very impressive. So, yes. And Mr. Computer thinks so too. He's even put a box around it. Okay, that's beautiful. So now we can proceed with doing this 
whole palaver up here, okay? We know this one's going to be 2x, this one here is going to be 2y dy dx. So let's do it. 2x plus 2y dy dx equals d by dx of 16, which we know is 0. So therefore we get that, right? Now for now we just solve it for dy dx, which I'm just warning you in advance, won't be in terms of x, it'll be in terms of x and y. Okay, but that doesn't matter, that's fine. So we so what we do is we need to find the values of x and y and substitute those in to get the value of the gradient. So um, what we already know that x was 2, so we just substitute that value of x into the equation for y to get what the, what the value of y would be when x is 2. Uh, there we go, and we get that, plus or minus root 12, which is plus or minus 2 root 3, fills us with glee, and we'll put that in. So, what, so we're basically looking for the gradient at these two coordinate points. Yes, we are. Yeah? Because x is 2 in both cases. You see that? Yeah, and uh, you know you can hark back to the visual of the graph I showed you on the first screen to really get uh, a really comprehensive understanding of that visually on a graph. Okay, So therefore, dy dx is minus x over y, so plug and play, and you get that, which is going to be that, which is going to be exactly what we got before using the traditional technique. Do you like it? Well, I'll show you where it comes into its own. It's uh, quite something. Sometimes we can't make y the subject to enable use of the traditional method A. So what do we do? Yes, implicit differentiation comes to our rescue. So we'll do one over the screen now and I'll show you um, what a mess that would be if we tried to do it the traditional way. So what have we got? We've got to find dy dx if 2x squared minus 2xy plus y squared equaled 5. Well, yes, see, look, this is a mess. It's all tangled up. X's and Y's are all tangled up. So when it's really like just, you know, giving you a headache to try and think about how you make y, might, might y, make Y the subject, look, just let it go and do implicit differentiation. It's fun. It's term by term. It saves you all the hassle, okay? So here we go. Differentiating, differentiating both sides with respect to X, we would get... 4x, would that's what you get from this term here. Now, this 2xy, that's a product rule, guys. So you've got to do product rule. So it's minus 2 times, okay? Left, d right. So think about it. Um, so I've got minus 2 out here, right? Just xy. So the derivative of xy would be left, d right, which is x dy dx, plus right, which is y, d left, which is dx by dx, which is just 1. You get it, x, the derivative, of, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, right? Plus, what's this term over here? This one here will get you, uh, that's a chain rule one, it's 2y dy dx. See? Have a good look at it, make sure you're happy with it, will you, please? Yeah, can I go on? All right, very good. Now, all we have to do, I've put it in red, cunningly put it in red for you, the dy dx. That's what we're supposed to be solving for here, isn't it? Uh, yes, find dy dx, yeah. Okay, so now it's just all algebra now. It's all, you know, I think we might get rid of this, uh, get rid of this bracket here, so we know what we're doing. Now that we've passed the danger point of that minus 2xy thingy that we had to differentiate, and off we go. Off we go. Well, look, how easy is that? I think we'll um, get rid of this beastie over the other side, get rid of that beastie over the side, collect the... Um, the duckling, get mother duck to collect her dy dx ducklings, and what do we get? That's what we get. Now we're just going to divide both sides by whatever's in this bracket here, and we're done, guys. We are done. Like a dinner. Yes? It's beautiful, isn't it? So that's dy dx. Oh, yes, cancel a rama, and you get that. And I think we might be... Um, oh, what's that? Oh, another one for you. Oh, I forgot I had that one. That looks even worse. That looks worse. Now, how... How in the universe would you make y the subject of that? I would not have a clue. So it's it's the implicit differentiation to the rescue, guys, right? We have to evaluate it at a specific point. One and so they're telling us x is nor is one, sorry, and y is naught or zero. So that's alright. Let's um do some implicit differentiation throughout the nation. Looks like we've got a product rule to worry about here as well as our, um, our dy dx thingy. And over here, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Look, that's with respect to x. Remember, everything's with respect to x. We're doing dy dx. So that would be, well, I won't tell you in advance what it would be. You, you, you have to think about it. What do you reckon it might be? 
All right. Okay, locked it in. Let's go. Using implicit differentiation, we get uh, y. That's uh, okay. That's left d right, right left d right plus right d left gets the d left bit gets the d y d x, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's this thing going to be? What do you think it's going to be? Well, we'll do it in the next line. So, but this three x term just gets us a, gets us a three down here. And of course, the four gets us a nothing because that's a constant, right? So the only thing in in um, contention here is what do you do with this? Well, I will show you. I've just cleaned that up a little bit there. Uh, yes, now. So it's d. Yes, it's 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 the derivative with respect to y of e to the two y times dy dx by the chain rule. That's what we do. And what's the derivative of e to the two y with respect to y? Well, you tell me. Yes. It's 2 times e to the 2y, yeah? Very good. Very excellent, okay? You happy with that? All right, well, now we've just got to clean it up and get dy dx out of it all. So that's, I've just rearranged everything. Um, I've got this beastie over the other side, and I've brought this one over to the left-hand side, and I've put it in a, uh, I've bracketed out, took, taken out dy dx as a common factor, okay? You happy? Good, let's make dy dx a subject now. There it is. And we're going to substitute. x is 1, y is 0 into that. And the whole thing is basically over Red Rover. After we put that in, we get dy dx, the actual numerical value of it. Now, uh, if y is 0, well, that term disappears, doesn't it? And if x is 1, well, so does that, because log of 1 is always 0. It doesn't matter what the base is. What's this thing going to be? Um, y is 0, so it's 2e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so it's going to be minus 2, I think. I think so. There it goes. There you got it. Nice, isn't it? Okay, that's the answer, and you're a star. Huzzah! And uh, so you go and do some practice, and you'll get to really like implicit differentiation. Okay, we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye.